my name's Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another monthly wrap up. Today we're going to be talking about movies, we're going to be talking about TV shows, I'm going to run through everything I watched in the month of November. But first, you may be asking, how do I get access to so much content? Well, I do have a secret weapon and it's today's sponsor, which is Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network. I've been using Surfshark for two years out of my own pocket to protect my data when surfing online and also to unlock geo-blocked content. It's a very easy interface to use. You just select which country you would like to appear from and with a click of a button, you're there unlocking geo-blocked content in that region. It's it's truly my secret to unlocking a lot of content that I get to watch on time. Thank you Surfshark. And Surfshark are currently running a promotion. If you use my code SPOOKY, you will not only get 83% off, you'll also get four months extra for free. One of the best things about Surfshark is their support system. So if you aren't completely satisfied, you can cancel your membership within 30 days, no questions asked. Unlock Surfshark right now, give yourself a good Christmas present and get 83% off plus four months extra for free using the code word spooky and there's also a link in my description. Thank you so much to Surfshark for supporting creators like me and let's get on to the video. Okay all the way at the start of the month we have actually a lot of horror this month so I'm very excited to talk about this. First I do want to mention just in case you get curious because I can see this is peeking over uh, this is a DW shirt. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that's what that is. <laughs> so starting at the start, we have The Deep House. A lot of you were curious about what I thought about this film. I did do a spoiler review on my Patreon. If you're ever interested in looking into my Patreon, it's $2 a month and you get all of my free videos and that's just the first tier. Um, but let's talk about uh, Deep House. So The Deep House, I loved the way it looked. The visuals are just amazing in this film. It's about a couple who are bloggers and they're in France and they go to visit these extreme locations obviously for their blog or their vlog I should say and um, they get this opportunity to visit this house that is completely untouched at the bottom of this lake and when they go down there things aren't what they seem. Um, it's very interesting how many different subgenres and elements they put into one. This is found footage. The visuals for this film are insane. How they could do majority of the film underwater in this set is just mind-boggling alone. I absolutely loved that but I have to say and you can see by my score I did not like the storyline. I thought that it was just there was just too much they had such a good thing going for it and I just wish they had leaned just into what they had created instead of trying to pile a lot of different things on there. I thought the dialogue was very strange, it didn't make much sense and yeah the storyline feels very forced. So I would recommend just for the visual aspects because that alone I think is amazing but um, unfortunately for the film in its entirety, I was not a huge fan. I watched Last Night in Soho, which I did a review on, so if you'd like to check that out, please do. I watched What Richard Did. This is so interesting. So this is an Irish, um, like, lower budget uh, film. I saw this on, like, a list of someone's disturbing films when I just, you know, look up stuff online trying to scour the internet for interesting movies that I haven't heard about. And um, the whole time I'm watching it, I'm going, what? who is this guy? Why does he look so familiar? Can any of you pick who he is? He's Christian from... Um, Midsummer, and it took me so long to figure that out um, but uh, this film is about a uh, a guy who goes to a party he's like just in school in high school he's about to come out of it he has like a love interest he's like really tight with his mates and then um, he goes to this party one night and this thing happens that completely changes his life which is why it's called what Richard did I don't want to tell you what Richard did because that's the whole surprise of the film um, but it's a very interesting watch uh, yeah it's kind of low budget a little bit slow it's more of a drama than any horror or thriller um, but I thought it was uh, yeah pretty interesting for what it was um, I watched the sleepless unrest the real conjuring home um, this is a film I mentioned in uh, what's coming to BOD this month a little while ago it's a bunch of paranormal enthusiasts who who go into this house and try and capture something and yeah it's it's ex it's like a, a episode of any like paranormal investigation show there wasn't really a lot to it and they tack this very strange thing on the end to try and like make it exciting but yeah I, I guess it's exactly what it sounds like <laughs> I watched the beta test which is Jim Cummings 
<sighs> I really wanted to love this film. As I say all the time, I always want to love films. Um, I love Jim Cummings so much. I was so excited to see him in Halloween Kills. Anyway, we'll get onto that later. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to like this film, but it just wasn't the subject for me. The one thing you need to know about Jim is that he loves satire and he just has... All of these films have such a strange sense of humour to them. Um, and this film, just the subject matter, really lost me. Um, it is about a... <laughs> this awful guy. He's a Hollywood agent and he um, becomes entrapped in this weird conspiracy where someone sends him this anonymous letter um, asking to have a sexual encounter with him. Um, and it's not what you think. It really isn't. It's this very interesting dark web uh, of conspiracy. Yeah. So the conspiracy part I'm into, but all of the other stuff, I just didn't like his character, which I don't think you're supposed to like his character. He's meant to be a dickhead. Uh, um, and yeah, I don't know. It just wasn't for me. I can see a lot of other people loved this film, but I'm, I'm you know, I, I, just because I love the guy doesn't mean I'm going to love everything he puts out, unfortunately. It just wasn't my cup of tea, but people are calling it a horror movie. Um, so if you're into horror and you enjoyed um, The Wolf of Snow Hollow, check it out, see if you enjoy this film by him, but obviously The Wolf of Snow Hollow, I find it's like completely different. I just feel like that's like a completely different approach to filmmaking, if that makes sense. I watched The Disappearance at Clifton Hill. This was a Netflix movie um, about this woman who, uh, she believes she saw something when she was a child. It's like a murder mystery and it gets tied up to a podcast and it's in this small town. Um, I felt like it was pretty predictable, um, pretty straightforward, but if you are into murder mysteries and you want something easy to watch on Netflix, probably check it out. It wasn't bad by any means, but just very predictable. I watched the separate, well, not the separation. I watched separation. The separation is a different film. I watched separation. Um, this is a horror movie that was going to have this huge release. And then I guess, you know, things happen in the world and, um, um, look at how many people hate this. <laughs> oh, Ben, what did Ben say? I know it's not a great movie, questionable if it's a good movie, but it had some of my favorite things involved in the story that elevated in my eyes. Comic book artist, creepy puppets, cool imagery. Yes, I totally agree. I love Ben. Um, I totally, totally, totally agree. This film had a very soft opening and I think it was left on a lot of shelves. But there's something so cool about it, it just didn't reach its full potential. Um, I really, I, I mean, you could see I gave it two and a half, but I really saw a lot in this film um, if it was pushed a certain way. If it could get a re-edit, I think that this film would be easily like a seven. Uh, it has very interesting um, elements. And um, yeah, the comic book factor that Ben brought up is is really cool in it. So I do feel like that blurb gives a lot away. So I might have um, blurred that because it's a very like shocking development of this film. Um, so I'll make sure I blurb that for you guys. This film is about a girl who's put in this unfortunate circumstance in between her parents who are separating and um, her dad's this comic book artist and her mum's like uh, not really uptight but they kind of present it that way but you know, I don't really think that they favor the mom in this situation. Um, and she starts having th like these interactions with this entity. Um, I don't want to go too much into it because I do feel like, yeah, it's very hard to explain without spoiling like a really cool, um, not cool, but a uh, really haunting element in it. Uh, but I just thought that the visual effects were really interesting. Um, the dialogue's a little bit iffy at points, but I do think that there's like just something really interesting about this story. And I do really, I know I only gave it a two and a half, but I do really recommend checking it out and seeing if you can see what I saw in the film, or if you think that there's anything there. These are the kind of films we need to remake, right? The next film I watched is Crawl. I watched this with my Patreons. I love this film. It's a um, film set in Florida and it's about a girl who needs to go and save her family during a hurricane and there's alligators. It's a pretty like solid survivor um, creature feature film if you're into that. I watch Love Hard. I know. <laughs> I've been very sick this month. <laughs> Obviously in the head as well. This is a new Netflix Christmas movie about a journalist. I believe she, she is a journalist who uh, tries to meet with a guy online and gets catfished and um, still stays with his family and um, you know, Love Hard. Love Hard is actually a play on Die Hard, by the way, um, which is part of the film. Um, yeah, it's basically exactly what you think. <laughs> uh, I watched Welcome Home. 
this ah uh, Aaron Paul um he has some very interesting roles doesn't he he goes very high very low this is another Airbnb horror if you're into that kind of subgenre we do you want a video on that because I feel like there's more and more of these Airbnb horrors and we can just freak ourselves out while we can't travel we might as well feel very grateful to be at home so let me know if you want that um and yes this is about them they are they're in Italy I believe and um they're having issues in their relationship this man who lives nearby offers to help them um to get to town and things like that and then he starts like weaseling his way in it's a very bad movie it's not very good <laughs> um it's poorly done uh very predictable and it's such a shame for such a cool location because the house in it is amazing but anyway um Kate uh I watched this one another Netflix one if this is an action usually something I wouldn't watch um it was okay the storyline was a bit meh. This one is about a criminal who is poisoned and has 24 hours to live and must find the person who poisoned and get revenge. You know, all that good stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, probably wouldn't recommend it. Not especially if you aren't into action anyway. Um, I watched, <laughs> I know, I hate myself too. I watched Amanda Knox, Murder on Trial in Italy. This is a T, when I found out there was a TV movie with Hayden Panettiere playing Amanda Knox, I had to, I absolutely had to. Um, all the respect to Amanda Knox, who probably hates this film. Uh, if you don't know the story about Amanda Knox, this is this echoes that about um, an American girl who's on exchange in Italy and um, gets suspected of murder um, and put on trial. The movie was trash, just as you expect. <laughs> um, I did go on a little bit of a Disney live action binge, which was a horror movie in itself, and we'll get to that. But um. The first one on there was Dumbo. Obviously, I wanted to watch this because I had Danny DeVito, huge fan, as we all are, every human alive, I hope, is a Danny DeVito fan. Uh, I felt like this was a very strange <laughs> um, remake because it seems like you had to know about the original for any of it to make sense because it was so random. I guess the original is quite random as well, but um, yeah, I don't know. It just wasn't for me. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I love Danny DeVito, but I just couldn't. Yeah, not for me. Um, I watched The Jungle Book, which was much better. Um, had some really, really cool casting. I think this one was casted the best, um, especially with Christopher Walken. He was so cool. Um, story of Jungle Book. I don't think I have to tell you guys the story of the Disney movies, but I do think this is one of the better uh, remakes for sure. It also had great elements because it had um, the kid and the animals. I guess Dumbo has that as well, but I thought this one was more realistic in a strange way to say. Um, I watched Show Me the Ghost, which I did talk about in a recent video, um, which I will tag here about um, recent uh, foreign horror gems that you may not have heard of. Uh, this one is really cool. This is a South Korean film that is about uh, two friends who are living in this house with an entity and trying to figure out what the entity is. It's a like satire on um, these kind of films uh, and you know the haunting in the house and how that plays out. Um, it's a comedy horror and yeah it's really fun. It's a fun time. I would recommend. I watched The Last Matinee which is getting a lot of hype this year. It was called, it's also called The Red Screening, I think. I'll put the other name here. This one is a throwback, although it's set in 93. It's definitely a throwback to like 80s giallo films um, set in a cinema. It's about a projectionist who needs to fill, well, her father's a projectionist and she needs to fill in for him one night, but she knows how to do it from, you know, her whole life watching her father do it. And then there's a killer on the loose. It's pretty basic. Visuals, beautiful. It looks beautiful, but I felt like it was just going through the motions for me. It was just a basic slasher. There wasn't anything really um, fun and interesting about it, but she was a great character and it was made well. Mulan. Uh, this one I go back and forth on, to be honest. Uh, very different feel to the original. Very, very different feel. No dragon um, and no cricket, which I was very sad about. Um, I love the lucky cricket. Uh, and yeah, this one is meant to be more like the original tale, but of course there's a lot of controversy around this film. I'm not going to talk about that, but you can look into it. I thought that this was interesting, the different way it was done. And, um, again, for someone who doesn't like action, I thought that this was an all right film. Uh, I watched Lion King. This is what I was talking about with horror. This film is uncanny valley, like the whole thing from start to end. The fact that most of the shots are exactly the same as the cartoon 
I know that it's like such a stupid thing for people to say, oh, I don't understand why this exists. We can just have the original. But this is literally like a carbon copy, but really creepy. And you can't help but wonder, why is it called live action? Why is this the live action Lion King when it's all CGI? The whole thing is CGI. I didn't like most of the casting, mainly because Whoopi Goldberg was not a hyena. Um, <laughs> but I just thought it was very strange and watching the whole thing through was a real chore for me. Um, I would not recommend The Lion King. I really did not like that. Um, I watched Rock, Paper, Scissors. This is another film I mentioned in my Fora Horror Gems. Um, and this is a very interesting film about a family that needs to stay together after their father passed and um, living in this house, their jealousies come out and how I guess they interact with each other through that. It's a very, um, it's a horror movie, but it's very um, sinister and slow, but um, the tension is just heightened. So it's very fun. The next film I saw is The Possessed. This is a film none of you would have seen. This is an independent Australian film that is directed by Chris Sun, who stars John Jarrett. Um, Chris Sun did films like Boar, um, Charlie's Farm, uh, so I really enjoyed Boar actually. Um, not so much any of these other films that I really like stick out for me, but Boar I thought was a really good callback to Razorback, which is a big cult classic here in Australia. The Possessed is about a man, it's based on a true story, um, and it is about a man who, <laughs> um, has this gift where he can, well he finds out he can accidentally exercise people. And then he, you know, turns that into a profession. And that's pretty much what it's about. Um, more about him later in life and him dealing with one possession in particular. Uh, I, I did not like this film. Um, you can tell by my score. It was just um, really hard to watch. Some of it is like fun and goofy and like silly sometimes when it's like lower budget films. That, like, that's, that can be fun. Um, but it was very slow. Uh, not much happens. Not much happens in this whole film. It could have been done in 30 minutes. I really feel like they're packing out the characters. There was problematic characters in there. Um, and yes, I mean, I, you guys, and I don't know if they're going to have it online or whatever, but I don't think any of you will be seeing it anytime soon. And I probably recommend giving it a miss. Sorry, Chris, totally respect you're an Australian director. And I really did like Ball, but this one was not for me. Um, Slaughterhouse Rules. This is one we watched on Netflix. I say me, me and my partner watched on Netflix. This is a bizarre meeting of genres. This is about a boarding school in England where a sinkhole appears and all of these different unlikely characters come together to try and um, save themselves and everyone else. And that happens more <laughs> towards the other side of the film. It's a very strange lead into this movie. Um, it takes a long time to get into the characters and there's a lot of them and it's just a little bit messy. Um, but it is a comedy and it doesn't take itself so seriously. There's some awesome cameos. We've got Margot Robbie's in it, uh, but uh, yeah, I wanted to love this film. Um, a very interesting watch though. So I'd be interested to hear if any of you have watched Slaughterhouse Rules and what you got from it because it was just kind of all over the place, which made for an interesting ride um, sometimes, but other times I was kind of a bit lost. Um, so I gave that two and a half. So it's right in the middle. Um, I watched Jungle Cruise. So this is Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt and they're on the search for this ancient tree. Um, and yeah, they're, they're hanging out with leopards and stuff. It's fun. It's just a cute movie. Very easy going. Um, yeah, quite funny in parts. So yeah, that was okay. Um, I watched The Mangler. I did a video talking about films I wanted to be remade and I wanted to make sure I was doing The Mangler justice. So I went and rewatched it just to make sure, um, I had all my points right. Um, this is a very interesting, almost like steampunk, um, film from 1995 about this, <laughs> Uh, it's about a guy who owns this laundry workshop and there's this, uh, it's almost like a pressing machine, I think it is. Um, anyway, it becomes, uh, possessed. There's a lot of other elements going on, but it goes into the origin and then a detective trying to stop it. 
um, very cool effects and I wish in my video I could have showed more of the blood and guts and gore because there's a lot um, but obviously for YouTube I can't do that but if you are interested check out the movie. I watched Case 39, I did this because I did a Does This Offend You which was on my channel if you want to check out Does This Offend You. The show isn't really about us being offended, it's about us picking apart different controversial things within movies and we're hardly ever offended. I do that with Nightmare Maven um, every single month and we alternate whose channel we go live on so this month it was mine. We did Case 39 and we did The Omen which is coming up. Case 39, um, I actually like this film. I like this film a lot and um, very interesting. When I said I was re-watching it on Instagram, I had people saying, oh my god, this film's so cringe. But I actually really enjoy it. The movie stars Renee Zellweger and she um, is a caseworker who gets put on this case with this oh, it's just horrendous, this poor girl um, whose parents are saying that she's evil and they want to send her to hell. Um, anyway, I won't ruin too much, but definitely check it out if you haven't. I believe it might be on Netflix, or maybe I watched it on Stan in Australia, but it's definitely streaming on platforms, so I would recommend checking it out. Um, and there's some really gory scenes in it. It's a very twisty ride and very ominous, so definitely check it out if you're interested in that. I rewatched Titan and the thing is when I do these come with me or with this movie idea to come chill with me, um, it's really hard for with extreme or different or just shocking horror, which this film is, to really like, you know, as soon as I turn the TV off, I start talking and um, to really digest it and think about it. It never really left my mind. And on my rewatch, this is probably one of my favorite horrors of the year. I feel like every time you watch this, you could probably find something new or I don't know, interpret it in a different way. And um, there's just a lot going on. So I do believe that this is a film that needs a couple of viewings, which I don't know if that's like works for the film or against the film because initially it's just the shock value and it takes a while for everything to sink in, but it's definitely one of my contenders for the best horror of the year now. I know, crazy. Um, I watched Venom. I rewatched this because we were seeing Venom Let There Be Carnage the next night. So with Marvel films, I'm not a big Marvel fan. You guys know that. And you know, there's no disrespect here. I, it's, it's just we like what we like and we don't like what we don't like. I like Adam Sandler and I'm sure a lot of people hate that, but it doesn't bother me if you don't like that. Um, I saw a comment last time saying that they were they hated that I didn't like Marvel films, but it really does not impact you if I don't like them. That's totally fine. Um, and my partner likes them. We don't, you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, but I do like Venom in, I think I like Venom because I don't like, you know, don't follow the comic books. And um, I think that that works for me because a lot of people are let down by the comedic element from what I understand, the comedic element in Venom. It's too jokey, it's too goofy. And that's kind of what I like about it. It's dark and goofy. Um, and it, I don't know, it just works for me. And uh, yeah, so I watched the new one in the cinema and I enjoyed it. I thought it was like a really interesting and fun ride. I loved Woody Harrelson because he's just goofy anyway. So he really fit this role for me. Um, yeah, I thought it was fun and goofy and silly and it was interesting because where the first one was setting up Venom and who Venom was, in this one it gets straight into the action and yeah, it's a basic, very simple storyline to follow and I enjoy that. I thought it was fine. I rewatched The Omen and that was for Does This Offend You, big fan of The Omen. If you have not seen The Omen, it's about a kid called Damien. And um, yeah, you should definitely watch the live stream because we get into it in detail and we talk about if Damien is even at fault in the situation. <laughs> um, but yeah, Damien is a little boy who was switched at birth with um, this couple's uh, baby who unfortunately passed away. So the father knows, but the mother doesn't know and they grow up raising this child um, and his origin is very spooky. I watched this Swedish independent film called Knocking. Um, about a woman who leaves a psychiatric facility and goes home or goes into this apartment and then she can hear knocking that is torturing her. That's basically the idea of the film, but not a lot happens. Um, it's kind of like a slow burn. If you're into that, you might be interested in watching it. I watched Sound of Violence, another film that I had brought up earlier in the year for uh, What's Coming to VOD. And this one, 
wow. It's a very cool concept, but it's so muddied by all of the different characters and the structure. Um, the film is about a woman who, well, she, when she was a girl, she loses her hearing and she has something violent happen to her. And then when she grows up, she kind of is chasing the same um, thing that happened. She has her hearing back and she is chasing um, similar situations so that she can have this intense feeling again and it's got to do with the sound of violence and hearing that and how that affects her. It's a really cool concept. It's based on a short film I believe and the short film what I've seen people say is that the short film really packs everything you need to know into it and the feature really drags different elements out that people weren't expecting and probably didn't like as much as the short which is what I've heard. Um, so definitely check out the short and see what you think if you're interested in going into more detail. Um, check out the film but I wasn't a huge fan of it I have to say. I watched Outlier. Oh my gosh, this film has something very special again. I'm finding the special in films that I don't really particularly love, but um, this film definitely has something special going on. It's about a woman who is in an abusive relationship and she goes to a gas station, we would call it a petrol station here in Australia, and um, this man uh, helps her and then she goes to stay with him, but there's something up with him and he's like talking to himself and it seems like she's tried to escape this awful situation and ended up in something just as scary. I think that this film was shot pretty well for probably the budget that went into it. I love the poster. Um, but uh, the line delivery, so like the dialogue and then also the acting was not great um, and yeah, it really showed itself for that and I was kind of disappointed by that. If they had upped that, I feel like the tension would have been there but it just dropped off a lot of tension and um, yeah, it was just more the delivery that was my issue but I, I liked the idea of it. <laughs> which is my life. I watched The Feast, which is a Welsh film. Um, I recommend checking this one out. Uh, this is a slow, slow burn though, just like the others. Um, but mm, I don't want to say what it is, but it's just really cool when you, towards the end, when you realize what kind of film it is. It's about a woman who goes to work for this very well-off family um, at this dinner they're holding. But things are strange from the get-go and you're not too sure whether it's the family that's strange or her that's strange. And you just know that she's holding something but you're not too sure what. Um, it's yeah, as I said, slow burn. Um, and you've just really got to stick with the mystery. There's a lot of clues throughout the film and um, I did not see it coming but I thought it was a really cool um, ending. I think that the acting was amazing in this film. Um, but yeah, very slow. I watched Halloween Kills. I did a come with me video for the Patreon. I felt like it was, I only just saw this. As you can see, what day does it when I watch this? The 22nd, uh, it's way too late. So I didn't do one on my channel. Um, but if you do want to see me going and checking out the film, definitely check that video out. Um, Evil Dies Tonight. I didn't mind, you can see, oh no, I haven't put my score in here, but I think I gave it a six. Um, I didn't mind Halloween Kills. I actually thought, because I think I knew what I was in for. A lot of people had said that they hated it. A lot of people said it was like a crazy ride. Um, I will say it felt very disjointed, the start and then the, you know, like the start prequel kind of thing. And then the end, again, Jim Cummings was in it, which I thought was exciting. And I think because knowing what Jim Cummings is like, that he's like, you know, he's got this satire edge and he's very comedic. Um, I was expecting as soon as he came on screen for him to be super goofy, so that was interesting. I do think that there was just moments in there that didn't really make much sense, but uh, it was just a, a very fun, crazy journey. I I have to say very controversial, but I don't think that this film made um, Laurie look good. I think it made her look really bad <laughs> as like, you know, this epic protagonist. I did not like what they did with her character in this film. I thought it was pretty like cheap, um, but uh, I will not hold that against the film itself. I still thought it was an interesting ride and very interesting subjects being put in there. It was quite frustrating at times because they're acted so dumb, but that's slashes. <laughs> that's what people do in slashes. But yeah, I did not hate Halloween Kills at all. People thought I was going to hate it. I didn't. I thought, I mean, it's, it is what it is. It wasn't amazing by any means, but it was interesting. I didn't get bored, so that's something. <laughs> um, I watched The Strings. Man, I wanted to love this film. <laughs> uh, 
You can see what people are saying here. Just, I wrote cool soundtrack though. <laughs> people are commenting on that post saying that it was slow and dull. And I have to agree, it is a very slow film. The music around it, so it's based on a musician. It's This is on Shutter, sorry, by the way, right now. Um, and it's about a musician who uh, goes out into this um, small town um, to stay in her auntie's, I think it's her auntie's um, cabin, lodge, house. And she's like there in the middle of the winter and um, something is haunting. There's like a haunting presence throughout the landscape. Um, it's a very slow, it reminds me a lot of um, the Black Coat's Daughter. It's very slow and um, just all about visuals. There are some really creepy moments in it and the music that she makes really ties in very well to the vibe of the film, which I loved. It was this haunting, very slow feeling film, but not a lot happens. So if you're into something that's just pure vibes, this is your film. Um, but I have to say there's not a lot more there. But I feel like it's very Black Coat's Daughter where you put together the pieces yourself and it's more about how you reflect on the film and then the feeling it gave you. I watched Black as Night, which is on Amazon Prime. And I actually think this is one of the better Welcome to the Blumhouse films. It is about, I, I love the main character in this. Um, it's about a girl who uh, realizes that homeless people in her town are turning into vampires. Um, the end is very messy, I'll give you that. Uh, but I love the narration. So she narrates the whole film and I just loved her, the way she delivered that. I thought that it was really interesting and fun and fresh and modern. And um, yeah, I thought that was really cool. But I, I do think that the end, they try and turn it into this other thing and, and they haven't really left the hints and done the groundwork to pave it into that throughout the film so it does feel very messy towards the end. Okay getting to the end we're getting there. <laughs> um, I watched Ghostbusters Afterlife please go check out my review on that if you haven't um, and I'll explain it all. I went to a really 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 cool premiere um, so you'll want to see that. Had real Ghostbusters there so you'll want to check that out. I finally watched Werewolves Within. This took, I don't know why this took me so long to be honest. Um, this is based on a video game. It's a very interesting movie movie about a small town that has uh he's not a sheriff what is he he is a um a ranger the ranger comes in a new ranger comes into town and um there's people dying and he needs to figure out who it is all of the characters are oddballs they're all very strange and it's just a strange town um which I love but it's really interesting the type of comedy in this film like I just couldn't pick it um it's quite slapstick and silly and just very goofy um, so some of the stuff I thought was hilarious and other stuff I just couldn't gel with. Um, and it's very fast paced and fast moving. Uh, so I definitely think it's worth checking out because I know a lot of people really love this film. I thought it was okay. I just felt like it moved really fast and um, I didn't get time to enjoy the characters. Uh, I just don't think it was probably suited to my personal taste for comedy as well. But I think a lot of people would love it and I can totally see why. But you, as you can see here, we've got um, one person here. Um, hey Kim, I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, didn't really, <laughs> wait, did you just read what they said? The thing I put myself through just to see the AT&T go on big screen. And then we have another person who absolutely loved it. Possibly one of the best video game movies ever, quite possibly. So I do think it's worth checking out this film. It's fun, it's fast paced, and um, it's just comedy. Uh, if you are interested in that kind of aspect, definitely check it out to see where you sit um, on the fence. Um, and then I watched 13 Fanboy. Okay, I'm glad I'm talking about this towards the end of the video because this might be a little bit controversial what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> this is a film uh, directed by Deborah Voorhees. It is a movie. It's like a fan-made movie. It's got to do with the trademarking of Friday the 13th, why they made it a certain way and why they couldn't have any real elements in there from the original films. I believe that's correct, um, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but the film, it's about all of these different elements uh, people who were involved in the Friday the 13th franchise and a stalker who was stalking the different cast members of the film. It has people playing themselves. We have Dee Wallace um, and then we have a very strange um, Corey Feldman who plays a total creep, which is very interesting. I follow him on um, Twitter and I know that obviously he's had a very rough couple of years um, with, I mean, a very rough life, but... Um, it's just very interesting he would play the creepy, uh, really um, inappropriate producer I thought was very strange for him. Um, you can see all the people here who are involved in the Friday 13th films who are in the film themselves, uh, playing themselves. 
They also had um, a lot of throw to conventions and things like that. So it's like a film made for fans, not necessarily made for a purpose, of, you know, to be an outstanding film itself. And you can tell that. You can see it. It's a very low budget film that is made for fans of the Friday the 13th and made for that community of fans. I myself um, cannot be in that community because I'm from a different country. I'm not really invited. Not that this is like my forte, but I'm not really um, part of those communities. And uh, this film feels very exclusive. Um, all of the fans really shown in the film are men. Um, and uh, I saw my friend Gory B, she did a little rundown on this. And I thought that was very interesting what she had to say. Um, and she's a huge fan of, you know, Friday 13th. And she's a part of this fandom being in America herself um, and uh, she talks about how um, the representation for the the women and men in this film are just it's just very different and um, yeah it's kind of sad uh, I do you know a couple of people I know are in this film dead meats in this film drum dums is in this film uh, and I totally appreciate that they're like you know right in that fandom but it, it feels quite exclusive and it feels like a film made for the fans which is totally fine um, but I guess I'm not part of that community so for me it didn't really work <laughs> to finish that off I watched Ratatouille I'd never seen this film before I watched this last night what a cutie. I want a rat so bad now. <laughs> um, I don't think I have to explain what this is about. It's about a rat that cooks in Paris. Um, I've never seen this. It's like a Disney Pixar classic and um, I thought it was adorable. So I gave it a seven <laughs> or like a three and a half, you know. Anyway, let's go to TV shows. I started off this month by watching What Happened to Brittany Murphy. Um, this is a mini doco series. It's really just like a long movie about um, Brittany Murphy and the insaneness around her death. Huge Brittany Murphy fan. Um, and I had no idea about the background of this. I believe I saw people talking about this and saying it doesn't bring anything new to the table, but I honestly didn't know any of this information. It's very interesting. It's about her. It's a lot about her fiance. Um, oh no, they were married. It was her husband. And um, the, just the whole, yeah, it's a lot. It's very sad. Um, and very interesting. This one, I believe, is produced by um, Blumhouse. And they. I wasn't a big fan of the music, the opening music. If you watch it, you'll see it's kind of like glorifying um, or glamorizing the death of like a starlet and um, I like to think of her as like an individual person instead of just that uh, so I felt like sometimes with these kinds of documentaries especially true crime as we all know it can be a little bit iffy um, but I did think that the information that they gave was very important and you can tell some of her friends who spoke up um, they did it for the right reasons to warn against this for other people who might be in similar situations so I do feel like it's a cautionary tale um, and quite interesting. If you are interested in this and you don't know much about it, I do recommend it. I finally finished Only Murders in the Building. Loved this TV show. It's on Disney Plus um, and uh, has Selena Gomez, uh, Steve Martin in it. It is this really fun murder mystery that also has like a podcast element put in it. Tina Fey's in it, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I highly recommend it. 20 minute episodes um, and it's just really fast paced and fun to watch. Very twisty murder a mystery um, set in New York, I believe it is. Uh, yeah, it's a very fun TV show and highly recommend it. I know people who have watched it like three times over. I watched The Circle US season three. I'm a huge fan of The Circle. I love that reality show so much. I love Big Brother UK as well. Um, but uh, I've watched all of the seasons of The Circle that are in the UK and now um, the US. And yeah, I, I didn't really love this season, I have to say. I find The Circle is so much more fun when you watch it with people you know. So I watched it with my tier two and three um, Patreons. Um, I gave the option of those who are on the Discord to watch it with me and we sat through and did a couple of sessions. And it's more fun talking about the characters than actually watching them. I don't know if I could have got through it without you guys. So thank you, my geezer gals. Um, but yeah, not as good as the, or not as good as the UK version for sure. If you've ever checked out the UK, the circle, it's so amazing. The US one is a little bit, they try and make it really tense, but it just does not live up to the UK standard. If you're a fan of the circle, I could say this one, it's up to you if you want to watch it, but you could definitely miss it. I watched the new updated Tiger King. 
this is really hard to watch. So I watched obviously the first Tiger King when I, you know, in the middle of lockdown, like everyone else. And it was very interesting. It's this cultural phenomenon. It really brought that kind of true crime documentary to the forefront of Netflix and it did so well for them. Um, but my concern was always the animals in the situation, which I'm sure a lot of you felt the same. And I never really liked Joe because of that. And then he became like this big I don't know, icon. So it was very interesting to have this new part of the situation, this new season, whatever you want to say it is, um, more focused on the animals. And it was really hard to watch because of that. Um, I think that is good. It had the actual message that we needed. Um, and maybe they needed some people to really get drawn into the characters before doing that. Um, but it was very hard to watch because you, like the, some of the details you get are very haunting and just disgusting and really, yeah, just, horrific so just be warned there's a lot you don't see anything but there's just a lot a lot a lot of details about how mistreated these animals were and then I got in to a pickle so this past weekend I wanted to watch like several different films but I just started watching the tv show mum in the background no one told me that this was amazing I love Anna Faris and I just had no idea how um, different the path this sitcom took. So it's filmed in front of a live audience, but it has very disturbing and controversial subjects. It's almost like an after school special, but they really don't um, mellow out anything or they don't uh, really water down any information. They talk about substance abuse, um, death, uh, teen pregnancy, lots of stuff. And um, it's just very, very interesting the way they go about it. Um, where they have this great balance of humor, um, but then also they they are really in your face about these real life topics that people deal with. And I thought that was, I've never seen anything like it. I thought it was really interesting and I didn't realize it was rated so high as well. On IMDb, it's rated like above a seven. And for a sitcom, I think that's pretty good. One that has canned laughter, even though it's in front of a live audience. I'm just very um, interested by it. Uh, and yes, yeah, so I started watching that and I had no idea what I was in for. Um, I thought it was so brutal from the get-go. And then I am two seasons in. I believe I watched 22 episodes in 24 hours. They go for about 20 minutes each, so it's not too bad. But yeah, I did not expect to be here today where I've watched almost two full seasons. And believe it or not, that's it for what I watched this month. Hopefully you have some recommendations from my list. And if you wanna give me any recommendations, I do have a link that you can go to to give any, or you can just leave them in the comments so other people can see them and follow along. Thank you so much for being here. You watching this video alone supports me greatly, so I really appreciate it. If you wanna give it a thumbs up, that also helps me out. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you here. Next, we'll be talking about films coming out in December, which is so exciting, and then I have have a very very epic video that I am trying to do for you it's gonna be a long one maybe as long as this and um, if it goes well it might be an annual thing so I'm very excited to present that to you um, in the next coming weeks I hope you're having a fantastic day stay safe and stay spooky bye friends mm -hmm.